otherwise you're going to be uh, YouTube famous. So anyways, my name is Randy. Welcome to Riptide. Tonight's going to be a little bit different. I just have a few announcements for you guys that I don't actually know. So what do we got? Easter. Easter is obviously this Sunday. We have three services here. We are not going to have dives. So don't come here on Sunday morning. Go straight to the sanctuary with your parents. Or if you're a real champion, 6.30 a.m. at the beach, High Tower Beach service. We need some people to help. If you are able to show up at 6 o'clock as a student, I'm going to need your help. I'd love to see you there uh, so that we can help serve this beautiful community. Next up, What's up, Brevard County? All right, guys, it is going to be a good time. Like I continue to tell you, every single camp, every single retreat that we do, there's always people coming to me, hey, what do you mean it's filled up? What do you mean you can't have any more room? I'm not going to be adding anybody, okay? So once these spots are filled up, they are filled up. Right now, what's very popular is our offshore fishing. So if you plan on doing one of those things, be sure, only 25 to 30 spots per activity. So don't come to me two months from now and be like, oh, Randy, why don't I get there? Hey, I told you. I warned you. It's only $275, which to my wallet's a lot. But when I shopped around the other camps, hey, you know what? I love Young Life, and I support their camps, but their camp is $750. Meaning if I wanted to go as a full-blown adult, I couldn't afford it. So you guys, $275. Make sure you share it with your parents. we got a poster out there. QR code, scan it, all the information, all the video, the full schedule, everything. It's going to be a great time. How do I know? Because we spent $20,000 on it. That's how I know. It's going to be a great time. All right, next up, we got... We're having some technical difficulties today. The best day to have it when we're doing a live concert. So pray with us as, as we begin to do this. Anyway, what do I like to do at game time? We like to give away some money. So I have a game. This game you guys have not seen. This game is called Ancient Artifacts. Does anybody recognize any of those things? Probably not because they are ancient artifacts. Things and devices. Okay, well, shh, if you want to make some money, then just holler at me in here in a second. All right, we got some rules. Have you ever wished you were an archaeologist? Yes. Do you think you have what it takes to discover ancient artifacts? In this game, you will come across items from ancient histories, the, se the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And you must write, text the item's name and their use before anyone else and before your time runs out. That's not how we're playing, though. You guys know how I'm playing. You raise your hand if you want to play. I will pick you. Then Cole will show something. Not until I tell him to. But once I tell him to, he will show an ancient artifact, probably that your mom and dad used to use to communicate with one another before there was text messaging, something of that sort. Where's my first victim at? Who do we got here? This hand went up first. Ella, you gotta, you gotta meet me halfway, girl. What's up? All right, I'm gonna show you this. For 100 pennies, tell me what this is and what it was used for. If you can't see it, go ahead, jump on stage. Get, it, get up there, see what you can see. I know you know what that is. You probably had a couple. <laughs> What do we got, Ella? Three, two, one. All right, let me, another hand right here. Come on, let's go. What is it? Pager. What does it do? Uh, text people through business. Woo, that was the ultimate text message. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry about that. He is right. That's a beeper or pager. Next up, ancient artifacts. Let's go. Who do we got? Who am I picking on? Ella, come on. All right, what do we got here? Sorry, excuse me, excuse me, coming through. What do we got? Ooh, come on, you've seen one of those. You... It's like an answering machine, like print stuff. Yeah, I think you're on the right track, you just need the right name. A telegraph? I don't know, is that your final answer? 
What is it? Are you going to pass it to a friend? All right, who's got it? CJ, what you got? CJ says, wait, wait. And what's it used for? All right, good. <laughs> All right, a fax machine. He is correct. Making it rain on you youngins today. All right, next up, who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? All right. Noah, what the heck is this? And when I first seen this, I didn't know. So it must be from the 70s. The very first ever 3D printer. Just kidding. That came out like 10 years ago. Printer? All right. So you say a printer. What is a print? What would that printer be used for? Printing. Is it a printer? Ooh, a printer. There you go, young man. Next up, who do we got? Rich, I'm just coming over to you, buddy. You tell me. What is it? What is this thing that your dad used to use to write papers with in college? You don't know what that is? Dude, this is how Eric got through college. Just kidding, but probably elementary school, you know, maybe. You, you knew. We're going to go over here with the silent. Juliana, what is that? It is a typewriter? Correct. Good job. Next up, all right, Skylar. I'm just going to get you with this next one. Come here. Ooh, yep, come here. What is that, sir? You are wrong. You have one more. Sit down, sit down. Does anybody know that is under 30 years old in this room? Come here. What is it? What is it? Nope, nope. I thought it was an original Nintendo video game myself. What do you think, Brock? What would you call that type of tape? Oh, no, come on. Dan, I'm just going to give it over here to Dan the man. Tell us what you were bumping with the windows down, Beach Boys, you had your girl. What is that? That's an 8-track tape. That is an 8-track tape, ladies and gentlemen. I have never had that. Not sure how it works. Next up, uh, Megan. What do we got here? It's got a funny name. Paper thing. Does anybody know? Let me get a guess. Read. What is that? I mean, there's a certain name. There's a specific name here. Brenna. Oh, Brenna points. What is it? A what? Brenna, do you know what it is? Does anybody know what it is? You know what it is? It is, but it's got a certain name. Close. Say that and then tell me what it's for and I'll give it to you. Spin wheel and it's for like keeping contacts. She says a spin wheel what is it actually called? for keeping contacts. It is called a Rolodex. I have never owned one of those either. Next up, what do we got? Wait, wait. Let me pick a person first. Xavier, come on. What is this? Come on. VHS tape. How do you raise your hand if you've got some VHS tapes at the house? I'm pretty sure I don't own one. I don't own one VHS tape. I don't even Hey, I'm this is how cool I am, okay? I don't even watch DVDs. All right. Now, wait, wait. Sorry. Let me get one more. One more here. No, you won't. Alexa, what the heck is this that your mom used to use? 
that looks just like a trash can, but I'm going to give you a hint. That is about this big. Mini trash can. Mm. Your parents probably used to hide their contraband in it. Um, Eric. What do you got? It is used to store camera film. He is correct. You want some money? I already gave you a free soda. Get out of here. All right. One more victim. Let me see who else we got here. You already went. You already went. Brock, you already went too. Reed went. We're going to try Richard again. I never call you that. You probably don't like that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. Have you ever seen Home Alone? Home Alone, this is the only reason I know about this. He goes to the hotel, and his eyes light up after they use this thing. What is it? No, wherever he's in the hotel, it works like this. Oh, my gosh. What, what is that? You are not being serious. Tell me you're being serious right now. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a dollar just because that was a great answer. Totally far from the truth. He said, he said a CD player. This, my friends, is a credit card machine. I have also never used that before. Do we have another one? Or is that it? Oh. Young lady, I was coming to pick on you anyway. Yes, ma'am, what do we got? Floppy disk. A floppy disk is 100% correct tiebreaker. That means the last one. So we're going to pick on Logan. Because Logan used to always raise her hand at game time. And for the past couple weeks, well, she just wants to... Oh, this is hard. I did have... Well, I didn't have this. My parents had this. Vicky, did you have this? It is a car, but it does a certain thing. Let me go to your parents. If your parents get it, I will give it to you. You know what that is. It was, it was very popular. That's what I said. It basically is, but it does something very specific. It does not play it. It's like a rewinder. That is a VHS rewinder. Meaning that there was a time the VCR did not go backwards. Oh, it took too long. Okay. All right, guys, check it out. I'm going to ask my people to turn the lights down at this time. This is a very, very special time. We were chosen out of every single youth group in Brevard County to be the host of this special event. And as soon as a video is going to play here in a little bit, you're not yet, Cole. But after I pray, a video is going to start. And we are going to start our time of worship through hip-hop because that's how we do it. So if you guys can get your energy up, come up out of your seats. Go ahead and come up here. Once they start, we're going to show a few videos first to set the, set the mood. Here's what's going on tonight. Here's what we're going to talk about. But, but once our artists hop on stage, be sure that you just let loose. Amen? Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this place, God. A place where we can just be free in liberty. And in your power, God, the power of Jesus Christ, would Lord, Holy Spirit, would you just have your play, your way in this place tonight, God? Would you just reign supreme in a mighty way that we would recognize, Lord, that is far from the normal, God? Would you move mightily tonight? Lord, as we just give you all praise, honor, and glory, would you be with us as we leave this place, with our families, with our thoughts that are provoked after we have been here? Lord, allow us to be vulnerable and allow you to work in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, once again, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Katie, three. Bro, we got to handle that tonight, man. Do it then. I mean, we got to handle that. We got to handle that. Wait, you'll keep. Every year, every year, every year, every year, every year, over 5,000 young people commit suicide due to low self esteem, depression, and burnout. Over 1 million children are directly affected due to major life changes such as divorce, absent parent, and a lack of a support network. 
Mounting evidence demonstrates that the devastating emotional and financial effects on today's youth will last into adulthood. Well, with Vision 2020, we want to make a positive impact and change this outcome by equipping today's youth for tomorrow's challenges. Vision 2020 is a loaded event that is generated by today's youth, offering not only an explosive concert, 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 but also a guided panel discussion in a completely safe environment. A safe environment. Safe environment. Safe environment. In this guided panel, performing artists and youth leaders allow themselves to be transparent and open to discuss the questions of youth today. Sharing their experience from struggles to triumphs in hopes to encourage and reassure young people that they are not alone. We believe that through this program, young people everywhere will develop clarity of vision with a deep and rooted understanding that they too can make it. Tune in on April 10th, 2021 at 7 p.m. to share some of your own personal insight on some of today's serious topics and answer questions from our viewers. Vision 2020, empowerment for all. 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 Hey, KD3! Bro, we gotta handle that Bro, tonight, let's man. Let's do it then. I mean, if we gonna that's handle what it that. Is, cuz, we gotta handle that. Right, wait, you'll keep my name out your mouth, y'all. Yo. Listen, we I gotta don't even take care of that tonight. Why you keep calling my name, bro? You're not listening to me. You gotta take yo, care of that tonight. you got the wrong one, man. Well, it's on there. All right, bet. We gonna meet up tonight. We gotta take care of that tonight. All right, bet. Let's do it. Uh -oh. Yo, what's up, everybody? Y'all good out there? Come on, make some noise, y'all. Put your hands together. Let's go. Let's go. Ha. Come on. Clap. Clap. Let's go. Let's go. Hands together, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out, y'all. Yeah. You don't really want to tangle up with me. Got that fresh fire running all up in my jeans. Don't know what you heard, but the word on the streets is that I'm royalty. I got that blood over me. Let's go. You don't really want to see me getting loose. Don't really want to see me blow your spot up like a new. Don't ever want to be the target when we coming through. And listen, let me tell you, we ain't ever about to lose. But you can rock with me, better move quickly. Looking like you're gone, hibernating like a grizzly. Time to wake up, you don't want to buck Come alongside or for you it's gonna suck I see you looking kinda odd Staring at me sideways, man, I'm with my squad Better act right, cause I'm rolling with a mob You don't want to fight me, I'm running with my guy Yeah, yeah, uh oh Let me, let me, let me hear your war cry Let me, let me, let me hear your Get your hands in the air like this, y'all Let's go, let's go, let's go Y'all ready? Hey, hey, my team is straight up, baby. Red beans and rice with gravy. What you been smoking lately? Some people love to hate me, but I ain't never moved with an attitude. Like when you're being rude and you ain't in the mood. Never ever gonna stop, never ever gonna quit. Never sweating your fly, never taking no lip. Never switch my team, never switch my team. Never selling my soul, never chasing that goal. Let's flood them, tsunami. My love is agape. No weapon can stop me. The God inside of me. Really loving you. Wanna make you new. See you. Everybody get your hands up like this, y'all. Staring at me sideways. Now I want y'all sway them like this with me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm rolling with my Yeah. Now we're gonna go a little faster. Ready? with my guy. One, two. Let them drop. Uh oh. Come on. Let me, let Come on. Let me, let me. Come on. You ready to dance? Let me, let me, let me. Yeah. You ready? Jazz ride, you don't wanna wrestle with me, let me loose. You don't wanna battle my team, our God is greater. Yeah, he's so much greater. Come on, make some noise in the building, y'all. No, 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 I said make some noise in the building, y'all. <laughs> How many y'all in this place love Jesus? <laughs> One of the things I want y'all to understand about that video is a lot of people see that video, they're like, yo, how come the good guys had those scary masks? And the reason is, you don't know how God is going to send help. What you think help might look like from God 
may not look the way you think it's going to be. He can come and he can come any kind of way. And some of you guys in this building tonight need Jesus. Is that true? Somebody in this building got something you're dealing with. Do you know anybody that might have committed suicide or was thinking about it? Look at this. Do you know somebody that's pregnant and don't know what to do with the child? They're like, man, do I want to get rid of this thing? Do you know somebody that has been cheated on by a boyfriend or a girlfriend and they're brokenhearted right now? Well, those are the kind of things we're going to talk about. Sis, I love you. I want to talk to you. Those are the things, and I definitely want your participation when we get into the panel discussion. Because we're about to rock the stage for y'all. But it's not about rocking the stage. It's about discussing it and letting you know that Vision 2020 is clarity of vision. That means you are not in this thing alone. Somebody else has been through what you're dealing with and is going to talk to you tonight about the things that you're dealing with and help you to get through that struggle. Do you guys believe this? Do you know that Jesus loves you? Do you know that tonight is a setup? You thought you were just coming for another, but God wants to talk to you and speak with you about some of the things you're dealing with, some of the things that keeps you up at night. So let's pray real quick, and then I'm going to bring out my next artist. Y'all ready for a good time? Now, if y'all keep the energy up, I'm going to give a shirt or two away. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this awesome evening. I thank you for these young people, Lord, that they're going to be not afraid to participate, not afraid or not ashamed to share the goodness of Jesus Christ, to talk about their hurts, their struggles, their pains, their temptations, their battles. And I thank you, Lord, for most importantly, deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I brought a crew with me. Y'all ready for the next artist? Say, yeah. yeah. Is that Amaya? What's up, girl? Say, yeah. yeah. Let me y'all, let me see y'all put your hands up and say, yeah. yeah! All right, put your hands together for my dog, my little brother, Imprint! Yo, 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 make some noise! Real quick, give it up for Jesus one time, give it up for Jesus one time. Man, this is great. Hopefully y'all bring some energy on these songs, huh? Yeah? All right, so uh, actually a little while before I came here, I was watching a Superman movie or whatever. So I really like superheroes. I like DC Comics, Marvel, anybody got fans, watch Avengers or whatever. So little do y'all know, y'all are actually superheroes too. Like, I can, I can fly a little bit. Just... No? Jesus is my superhero too. Did y'all know that? Is Jesus y'all superhero? All right, well, I got this song called Superheroes. Let's go ahead and run it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get it. Yeah, he's my, yeah. Super hero. He's my super hero. We are super heroes. We are super heroes. I do not know no defeat. I got a crest on my chest. I got a kryptonite too, but there is no S on my chest. They're just a fire in me. Guess it comes from the sun. He wanna play the game now? Too bad we already won. Died on the cross on my sins. That man a real MVP. Told the devil he gon' lose. Got no control over me. Living this like it be hard. But the blessing be so sweet. I'ma just carry my cross. No time for dragging my feet. Somebody get me a cape. I do not care about no mask. When it comes to my Lord, call me the Hulk, I'ma smash. I'm on my solid and iron. Laser precise and a point. I got the strength of a giant. Open my mouth and I'm making some noise. Super hero. He's my super hero. You are super heroes. We are super heroes. Super hero. He's my super Hero, we are super heroes. We are super, yeah, heroes. 
Brandon is tracking the flash. Lyrics be piercing like arrows. I stay on only one path. Talking about straight and narrow. And I be getting Gennaro. Trying to get blue in my pocket. Where it be a swollen tornado. Bar taking off in a rocket. Gotta give a track and a rod it. Hitty three, saw talent and copped it. We working for saving the culture. We working for mercy, not mosh pits. Time to assemble our squad. We be the game like Avengers. Time to clean up our act. At my life station, I sit us. Man, I be going gorilla. On the mic, I be going beast boy. Writing while eating my dinner. Too rough to be playing chichilla. No fear in the night. We take it flight. Slashing these demons like Wolverine. I got the ammo like one machine. No power compared to the Rizzer King. Super. Hero, he's my super hero. We are super heroes. We are super heroes. Super hero, he's my super hero. We are super heroes. We are super heroes. Everybody make some noise. All right, all right. I think y'all gonna like this next song too. Hey yo, I'm gonna need all y'all to bring some energy, bring some passion onto the stage. Everybody make some noise real quick. Where's the passion, y'all? I said make some noise real quick. Let's run the next song, Passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was the passion? Where was the passion? Passion, passion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. it's because y'all ain't making enough noise. Y'all make some noise. Passion, passion, passion. I said make some noise. Look, look, look. Yeah. Why is life such a partition? Making sales for a martician. Scoring points for the wrong team. Two laps, got no ambition. Flipping patties, trying to get by. Hard work, but ain't changed nothing. One day a white horse come, y'all wouldn't even say nothing. You just let the moments pass by. Giving gifts, so don't use Jack. My boss kept his slips. He can take them all right back. Let you time and you burnt it. Spend it all on a little frame. You pushing on a big body. Weak faith makes you lame. Lame spirit trying to speak to God. But now he ain't gonna hear nothing He telling you the whole time It's cause you won't stop with the cussing I will show you the right way After that I will keep busting Let the horses to the water now Die of thirst if you drink nothing What you expect me to do? Jesus is a cup of living water Man, I'm just a juice I ain't got no trumpets but I will say Yeah, I got the news Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life Yeah, my Bible is proof I don't understand, man, where is the passion? The joke of your bones from making it Happen, where was the passion? He would stay lurking, pray you was packing. Where was the passion? Don't be about games, just be about action. Where was the passion? Where was the passion? Look, no baseball won't settle down. You ain't it, but you stay a clown. No penny wise, but if I rise, you steady trying to pull me down. Lord said it ain't easy. Might die for my namesake. Paul said that's a big bonus. Flesh gone and my soul safe. God gives and the world takes. Rock your world, it's an earthquake. Must have seen, give me more faith. Got a brace when the bow breaks. Talking about I am not hearing nothing. Put the blame on your voice, sister cousin. Complain like a baby, too busy fussing. Coughing up, Johnny, some rubber tussing. Lane spirit trying to speak to God, but not he. You gotta hear nothing. He telling you the whole time. It's cause you won't stop with the cussing. I will show you the right way. After that, I will keep busting. Let the horses to the water now Die of thirst if you drink nothing What you expect me to do? Jesus is a cup of living water Man, I'm just a juice I ain't got no trumpets but I will say yeah, I got the news Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life yeah, My Bible is proof I don't understand, man, where is the passion? The joy of your bones are making things happen Where is the passion? Evil stay lurking, pray you was packing Where is the passion? Don't be about game, just be about action Where is the passion? Where was the passion? Look, the passion got me running till I'm out of breath. Keep on going hard till there's nothing left. I've been snatching souls like it's petty stuff. Wait, wait, what? That's that's wrong. Still, still nah, wrong. Nah, 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 nah. I mean like, I mean, like snatching like, souls, souls from, from Satan. Like, Satan. You know, like snatching souls. Trying to save your soul. Never mind. Never mind. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Everybody, make some noise. Oh. 
Give it up for Jesus. Oh, that wasn't for Jesus. That was for some Nike shoes or something. I said, give it up for Jesus. All right, so this next artist, y'all ready for it? I said, this next artist, y'all ready for it? All right, all right. So let's make some noise for my sister, Jasmine Samo. What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? Hi. <laughs> y'all look good out there. Y'all feeling good? What was that? I said, are y'all feeling good? Oh, okay, okay. Well, again, my name is Jasmine Simone, and the song I'm going to perform for you guys today is called Stay True, and I wrote it just as a reminder to stay true not only to yourself, but to, who, to God and who he created you to be. Amen? All right, let's run that check. Gold steady on the grind. You're the first and last thing on my mind. Mama told me a good love's hard to find. Through my thick and thin, never caved in. Started from the bottom, celebrated every win. Heart so pure, had to be sure. Tasted and seen, now you got me wanting more. Spirit on fire, love it to my soul. Diamonds with the gold, let the good times roll. Making major moves, if you want it, I'ma spend it. Live it how you love it, you know life's such a blessing. No longer feeling lonely, so happy that you want me. Committed to you only, I'll rock you with you, bro. Okay, let me see, I'ma stay true, I'm in love with you. Got you by my side, I ain't never gonna lose. I'ma stay true. Okay, I see you. I'm a say true. I'm in love with you. Got you by my side. I ain't never gonna lose. I'm a say true. Katie, where you at? I'm a say true. ATM. Yeah, the salvation for my every sin. Yeah. Fire ain't gonna burn me up. Burn me up. I got you, so what I need with love. I ain't stepping outside, no, dedicate my life. You're the only passenger for me when I ride. Stay I'm true. leaning in my whip, everything lit. Issues on the highway, so I ain't sweating it. No top down, lay back, rocking with a sway back. Cootie right beside, trying to flirt, but I don't play that. Not a minute, man, but I've been in it for a minute. Best believe I'm in this thing to win it. No longer feeling lonely. lonely. So happy that you want me. That you want me. Jesus, committed to you only. To you only. I'm y'all of Jesus, rocking with you. Hands oh, up, oh, hands oh, up, hands oh, up. Oh. I'm a stay true. Let's go. I'm in love with you. Let's go. Got you by my side. Yeah. I ain't never yeah. gonna lose. Yeah. I'm a stay true. How many y'all gonna stay true to the word of God? I'm a stay true. How many y'all gonna stay true to Jesus Christ? Let's go. I'm a stay true. I'm in love with you. Got, Got you by my side. Let me hear y'all say, I'm gonna stay true. Come on, y'all, say real loud. I'm a stay true. Yeah, yeah. Check it. Will you meet me when the sun is up? I'm a stay. When my body ain't good enough? I'm a stay. Will you go in the bank low? I'm a stay. Turn away and walk out the door? I'm a stay. Will you leave me when you want that action? I'm a stay. Will you beat it like a Michael Jackson? I'm a stay. Stick it through with the thread news. I'm a stay. Or top gunning like I'm Tom Cruise. I'm a stay. I'm a stay true. Y'all make some noise for Jesus Christ in the building. Come on, y'all, make some noise for Jesus. Uh oh. Hey, let me hear y'all say this real quick. Say, stay true. Stay true. Okay, okay, I had to get y'all hype real quick. I had to get y'all hype for the next person. Are you guys ready for the next artist? Are you sure you're ready for the next artist? Okay, okay. Well, I have the pleasure of introducing my brother, my actual brother, Mello from Hidden Flames. Let me hear it for him. 
What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all sounded kind of lit out here. I was kind of surprised. All right, I want to see how lit you are. What do the Christians sound like out here? Let me hear you say Jesus real quick. All right, let's try it together. Together. One, two, three. I don't know. That was kind of weak. All right, one more time. One more time. All together. Real loud. One, two, three. Okay, go ahead and run it. All right, this one's about being a light in the world. Go ahead and run that track. We want to be a light in this You're, world, all right? Hey, yo, Mello, you trying Come to have an intro, bro? All right. We're going to keep it lit. Get all right, we keep it lit. Okay, okay. Use me, use me, I'll be the light, I'll be the light. Use me, use me, I want to fight, I want to fight. Use me, use me, send me the wall, send me the wall. Use me, use me, open the door, open the door. Light me up, oh, light me up. Go ahead, light me up, light me up, light me up, light me up. Light me up, spray me down. I'm a still blade. Got fire in my veins. Living for the king. J E H O V A H. And I'm flowing like a lake. Get it. Talking to me like I'm the old me. The trip to a tsunami, you all know me. Brush it back the blessing, then slow it down. Sniper in a cup, that's how I roll around. JC, my provider. I'm a survivor. Had Jesse since a child, so I know who I am. So I got the upper hand. Never been a switch, but I'm balling like the rain. Use me. Use me, I'll be the light, I'll be the light. Use me, use me. I wanna fight, I wanna fight. Say use me, use me. Send me the wall, send me the wall. Say use me, use me. Open the door, open the door. Light me up. Oh, light me up. Go ahead, light me up. Light me up. Go, light me up, light me up. Use me, use me. I can send you through the teeth. Be to their knees, knees no stopping me, firm. on my feet, like for me, me. Move like Jodeci, ooh yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah, I got the currency, use me, ain't no doubt I'll pay you back, back with loyalty, use me, I got my phone, give me a ring. ring, I will not settle for less than what you have for me, use me, I'm trying to get back, back for me, power and numbers, so I'll recruit the family, delivered by grace, so I'll carry your, your legacy. I'm gonna lift you because you have that for me. Use me, use me. I'll be the light, I'll be the light. Use me, use me. I wanna fight, I wanna fight. Use me, use me. Send me the wall, send me the wall. Use me, use me. Open the door, open the door. Light me up. Whoa, light me up. Go ahead, light me up. Light me up. Light me up. Use me, use me. I'll be the light, I'll be the light. Use me, use me. I wanna fight, I wanna fight. Use me, use me. Send me the wall, send me the wall. Use me, use me. Let me see y'all do it real quick. Go, light me up. Light me up. Go ahead, light me up. Light me up. Light me up. Light me up. Put my setup, I'ma fight. Use me, I'ma be a light. Go ahead, light me up. Light me up. Light me up. Shine, 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 now shine, 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 now shine, shine. Everyone say Jesus! Jesus! That's what's up. Okay. Yeah, I fire. I got some Christians in the fire. building. I think so. That's crazy. That's what? crazy. Uh, they kind of lit. It is lit. I mean, I love God. You love God? I do. Y'all love God? I just want to say something real quick. Y'all doing so good. Put your hands together for yourselves. All right, y'all. I just want to take a quick second. I'm going to give a shirt away real quick, and I'm going to give one away at the end. I don't know who's been the most lit. Now, I got more shirts in the back. I didn't put them out because it's not that type of night. We don't have merch. We got merch, but we're not really trying to sell them. But I do have a medium and a small. So if you catch this and it ain't you, be, be a blessing to somebody. All right? I'm going to get rid of the small first. Now, all I need y'all to say, well, I don't even know. Who, Miss Nadine, you and the, put your hands together for my wife, y'all. Miss Nadine in the audience. And maybe I should put this on Pastor Randy. I don't know. <laughs> Who out here been the littest? Like, y'all point to the person that you've seen been, like, most lit. All right. There you go. Put your hands together for my man. Oh, yeah. All right. 
So we're going to teach y'all a dance. You're either going to learn it or you're going to remember it, okay? Who knows how to swag surf? Good God oh. Almighty. All right. Wow. All right. So it's pretty much a real simple move. You're going to stretch wide. Nice and wide, right? Good, good, good. Participation is key. Hands out to the side. And you're just going to lean side to side like this. All right? And then back to the other side. Go ahead and start it. One side like that. Side like that. They don't know. Right. No, 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 no. One. They don't Two. know. They don't know. Good. Okay. No, 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 no. One. All right. Where is it? One. Alright, when the beat drops, speed it up. Okay. Two. One. Now speed it up. Two. There we go. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. 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 Where is peace by the pound? Where is gold on the ground? They Keep going. What's going to stop them? It's a beast or a hound. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know where I'm headed. Vision 2020. Lately, God been flexing. Looking at me crazy. Why me manifest it? I just cut my flesh away. Yeah. No interest. Call my number away. Yeah. Don't call a text. Call my flesh away. No anorexic, <laughs> throw my number away. Don't call it Texas. Don't you call it Texas. Don't you call it Texas. I'm going a narrow way. Believe me in these verses. Devil got hell to pay. Too many of my dogs and hearses. Can't do halfway. I got to make some shape. I got a point to make. Need it all. Now I wait. That's why I grind from eight to late. I, they don't know. 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 Where's peace by the pound? Where's gold on the ground? They don't know what's gonna stop them. It's a beast or a hound. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Guy, he don't know. Swap they G. Talk to him real quick, bro. Moving too fast, I don't know. If life's a race, then why go slow? They don't know what's going on. Lately, I've been in my zone. Cause I'm trying to make a way. But my patience starts to fade. Said I'm tired of feeling pain. So I had to change my ways. Keeping it moving. Don't waste my time. We moving insane. Yeah, we know it's our time. We know. Vision 2020, you know they all blind. God is my light, they can't stop my side. They don't know. 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 Where's peace by the pound? Where's gold on the ground? They don't know what's gonna stop them. It's a beast or a hound. They don't know. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know. They don't know nothing at all. They don't know, no, no, no. That was good. Yeah. It surprised me. It surprised me too. I might be a little out of breath. I'm tired. Wait. You see it? Oh, you look good. Okay, you too. All right, we need some more. We need a little bit more noise to bring Katie back up. All right. So everyone, jazz rock, jazz, jazz rock, rock, jazz rock. Not loud enough. You're gonna come jazz out. Rock, rock. Jazz rock, jazz rock, jazz rock. Jazz rock, jazz rock, yeah, jazz rock, jazz rock, jazz rock, jazz rock, hey, 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 Y'all so litty. All right, y'all. Two things before we wrap this up. Y'all having a good time? 
Y'all scared. I need like the energy I see out here. And y'all in the back, don't think I don't see y'all back there rocking with us. Put your hands together for the backseat rockers, y'all. I see y'all back there giving God glory. Are y'all having fun? That's what matters right now. All right. I got a medium I got to give away. And uh, guys, just stay out. Don't need to go back. This shirt right here is for a medium. Oh, you already rocking the John Slayer shirt. That's what's up. <laughs> um, let me do this song, and then uh, I'll throw it out and give it away. This song is very special to me. A lot of y'all don't know this, but somebody on this platform was in a really bad car accident, and we lost one of our brothers. The brother that was in the car with somebody on the stage, he was in the passenger seat, and he passed away. And they landed upside down in a retention pond, and he drowned, and the other person got out. So the sad part about it is we shot this video. You'll see it up here. In fact, he pops up in the video during the first verse, the first chorus. And I told his parents everywhere I go, when we do this song, I would mention his name. Aaron Wilson. Rest in peace, L-L-A-W. So this song means a lot to us. I have reached a point where I don't get very teary-eyed anymore when I do this. But when it first happened, I used to have to stop performing and just let the track play, and these guys would help me. But we know he's in the arms of Jesus. And we know we're going to see him again soon when it's our turn. You want to know the hardest part of that, y'all? I was his youth pastor, and his parents asked me to do the eulogy. And it was hard. So this song is called Running With My God. Let's go. Yeah. Man, stress today, bro. Let's go. If you got a mic, I need you to help. Take me to Jamaica. Y'all listen. Too many problems in the world. I just wanna shine like my diamonds and my pearls. I don't wanna worry, boy. Just wanna live. I can feel my chest tight. With these bills. Wanna get away from it all. I need a break. Fifty million dollars in my pocket would be Lottery ticket, boy, let me play the game Gotta get brand new Everything's like the same Depression trying to get me, but I'm Out here like I'm drifting Gotta unload these issues on my mind Let me get a shredder, I'ma I'ma throw them up, then I'ma throw them out My God can't lie so I won't ever doubt He did it in the past He gon' do it for me now I won't let these problems that I'm facing get me down I'm running with my God I ain't gotta worry He already told me He gon' do it for me In every situation I am free The battle is the Lord So I got the victory Lucifer, stay trying to play me Hating on my future He be pushing on me lately Play a lot of games, but don't play with my money. Takes the love of God to hold me down when I'm angry. Better let go. Give me everything you owe me. Patience is a virtue, but it's running out here. Short. Don't make me call my dude. He protect me like his wifey. Locked down like a pit bull. Check you like he's Nike. Consider this your warning. I'm about to drop the leash. 666, you've been marked like a beast. The day you see my back is the day I walk away. Treat you like my issues, I got nothing to say. I'ma throw them up, then I'ma throw them out. My God can't lie, so I won't ever. He did it in the past, he gon' do it for me now. I won't let these problems that I'm facing let me just go running with my God. Everybody get your hands up in the air. He gon' do it for me In every situation I am free Aaron, love you man Let's go, let's go, say it with me Running with my God I ain't gotta worry He already told me He gon' do it for me In every situation I am free The battle is the Lord So I got the victory Running with my God Come on y'all, get those hands up Come on y'all, get those hands up Come on, let's get those hands up. With my yeah, yeah, say it with me, yeah. Running with my God. Run, 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 running with my God. Y'all ready? 
Give God some praise, y'all. Give God some praise, y'all. Give God some praise, y'all. Give God some praise. Come on, make some noise. Woo. Come on, give God some praise. I know some of the sisters in there are like, oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> now, the stage is wet, y'all. If you fall, sue Randy. Don't sue me. <sighs> I'm over it, man. I'm able to sing that song and know that things are going to be okay. Um, this is the best part. Again, my name is Katie 3 This is Jazz Raw Records. And tonight you're experiencing Vision 2020, equipping today's youth for tomorrow's challenges. I want y'all to know you're not alone. Now, for some of you guys, I hope you don't mind, but the Lord told me to give this shirt to this young lady right here. Put your hands together. You're not forgotten. All right, y'all, this is the ending of the, the concert aspect. Please take your seats and welcome to the stage, Pastor Randy. Come on, y'all, make some noise for Pastor Randy. Now, guys. If I can have somebody, that's all right. Man, this is what I'm talking about. That's how you know he's a youth pastor. He does work. He gets in here, he cleans the toilet bowls. He does whatever he needs to do. He vacuums the This is a youth pastor, probably one of the best youth pastors in Brevard County. I need some, I just need two more stools, guys. We got four up here. Thank you all so much. That's Randy, this you right here, man. Yeah, man. We want you to be in the middle. Yeah, we're going to. Now, remember social distancing. Don't come close to me. Shoo. I chew. I chew who? Shoo. I chew who? Guys, this is our panel. We're going to do our best to hand the mics to each other. Um, first of all, can y'all just give Pastor Randy one more big old round of applause? I'm so eternally grateful for him. I said, hey, man, I got this idea. And this is what I want to do. And he, without even hesitation, said, bet, let's do it. Hands down, I want to serve. One more time for Pastor Randy, y'all. Are you guys thankful I had him come through, though? This is what we call ministry. We share platforms. We, we, we share gospel. We're, we're brothers in Christ. So that's just what we're going to do. But right now, I just want to welcome everybody to the unveiling part three. My name is Pastor Randy, and we are going to be introducing you guys to the unveiling part three, which is equipping today's youth, you guys, for tomorrow's challenges. How much better is it to live life knowing the answer to the problem before it comes? There's so many things that are being talked about, and today we want to impart wisdom and truth on each and every one of you through some of the things and the fires that we have been through as individuals in your shoes. You know, it's so funny that you said fires because one of the things that we are doing is called the unveiling, and the unveiling is showcasing the love of God. And we do that by sharing our ashes and hoping that through our ashes and our experiences, you can exchange that for beauty. And God wants to give you beauty for ashes. The only problem is you have to be humble enough to say, you know what, Pastor Randy, I need that information. I really need that. Because when we were younger, I'm a better skateboarder than he is. He didn't tell you that, but I'm a much better skater. Yeah, I'm capping. <laughs> but I skated with a lot of pro skaters, and I do tricks. Now, he's awesome, man. And the thing is, I watch the way he works with his young people. I'm the youth pastor at my church, and we've come across so many situations. I don't know how else to say it, where we've seen kids cutting themselves on their wrist. And I didn't know what that meant. And I was like, hey, man, why are you doing that? And the young man said, listen, you see the size of my head? You see how big it is? I keep getting teased for it. And I want to put the pain on the outside like what I feel on the inside. I want to feel pain outside like I feel it inside. And it broke my heart. And I wrote a song called Bullying, and I Won't Bully. And this is what sparked Vision 2020. We want to take this around the world. In fact, before COVID, we had started doing that. And COVID came and it slowed down, but people were booking this program and taking it. And we're going to take it around the world. And wherever will allow us, we're going to share music and we're going to share the gospel. And it, was, it doesn't have to be a church setting. It could even be a school. Awesome, man. Well, 
I want to I want to open up for you guys just to start thinking. What we did was we took some questions from people via online. So we'll be answering some of those questions, but also questions, situations, feelings that you have. I don't want anybody to leave this place wondering what is the answer to this thing? Am I the only one who feels this way? Because no, you are not. And everybody in here, if we can be vulnerable with each other for a second, we know that we're just broken. We're all broken. We're just broken in different ways, in different places. And life is hard, not just for the poor. Life is hard for everybody, not just for the, for the hurting, not just for people who just had tragedies. There's been people who have, had, have been having to deal with themselves, amen, and their own sin for years and years. And we just continue to turn a cheek. We continue to do the same thing, expecting a different result. And I want to give you guys a chance. And, and Jazz Raw and the unveiling, they want to give you all a chance to have freedom and liberty in Christ. Amen. Can we do that today? Yeah. Let's do it. We want to we start taking some questions here. Yeah. Um, let me do this. Just uh, We got people up here that has been through some things, just so you guys know. We've got people up here. You can ask any one of us. For some reason, whenever we go, the guys don't get as many questions as the girls do. Um, which tells me there's a lot of issues that our poor girls are dealing with. But if you have a question, please be bold enough. Don't worry about the parents. They're not going to look at you any kind of way. In fact, they have wisdom. And you just got to reach out for it. I know because there are parents, we hear it all the time. It comes across as lecturing, but it's nothing but love. It's nothing but I don't want you to go through what I've gone through. So let's see who's bold enough. Maybe you have a question right off the rip. And maybe you guys want it. It was riptide, right? Right off the rip, let's see if you got a question for any one of these people up here. Uh, like, you might say, why is, why is that one so tall? I don't know. Whatever your question is, it's open to you right now. Okay, we're coming to you next. And if you don't, go ahead. Apologies. <clears throat> what, one wow. second. It'd be great if you come up so that we can get it recorded. But he's going to ask, and then you can come up. So this isn't a question, per se, but all, I want everybody to hear this. I had so many problems uh, a few months ago. And when my mother got her surgery, uh, something broke uh, one of her organs. And I prayed so much for her. And she gave me up. Well, she never gave me up, actually. She brought me down here to my grandmother so she could uh, take care of me. And ever since then, it's been like a miracle. Every day I'm reading my Bible, I'm reading my Bible, and I've been underweight, and I was very small for my age. And when I was entering high school, I didn't feel right. But then when I came down here, I got a gym membership. I started eating more and more and more, and I'm now normal. I am the best I can be. And I hope I can get Make and Mike and Moik and more. Man, did you hear him say, you want, I wish I could give you some of my weight, brother. I think that would. <laughs> <laughs> I told that out to a lot of people. Don't worry. Does anybody want to say something to that? I mean, that's, that's powerful. You can work out with me anytime. Hey, praise God. Just thank you for sharing that. that. That lifts up other people who are going through the same thing who would never get up and say it. But now because you did, somebody else says, man, I can identify with that. And praise God for, for, for what a transformation. Because what did it take on your end? Just a little action, right? You could have been, you, people are going through hard times. We have two choices. We can fight against it. We can do what the Bible says. We can believe in it. We can lean that way. Or we can do nothing at all. And those are the two choices that we have. So praise God that you're a warrior, young man. Amen, amen. Right. While she's coming, I also want you to know that the Bible says, and we know that everything that Satan meant for evil, God meant it for good. So no matter what the situation is, you can make it. Here's what I want you to know. I know it's intimidating, but somebody's going to see this, that your question's going to help. Um, so it's a weird question, kind of. But um, I can't really read the Bible because the last time I read the Bible, it frustrates me because I can't really understand it. 
And then last time I read the Bible, I got like five verses in and I didn't understand it. And I kind of had a mental breakdown and then chucked the Bible across the room. So I can't really read the Bible. But does that make me a bad Christian? Yeah. Yeah. So um, does that make me like a bad Christian or something? Because I believe in God and I trust him and I gave my life to him. But I can't really read the Bible. So I just feel like that makes me a bad Christian, but I don't really know. <laughs> what church do you go to? This one. Okay. Um, does anybody want to talk to Have any of you guys ever? Yeah. Hello. Testing. My name's Melo, by the way. Um, I'm just going to say this flat out. I hate reading. Like, it's the worst. I love reading. I just don't college. understand the Bible. Right. So what I do is I don't like to read. So I will literally YouTube videos and stories and even listening to the word spoken from other people instead of reading. Because that way you can also get a relationship with the person and you can also get guidance from them. So this way, if you have any more questions while they're saying something about the Bible and you have some kind of mixed stirrings or whatever you don't understand, you can ask them as they're saying it to you too. But does it make me a bad Christian if I don't necessarily read the Bible? Makes you a real one. Thank you. Amen. I think you asking the question, you asking the question is God convicting you to seek out answers for that. And so I'm going to tell you something that I got, a, I got a good buddy of mine, Terrence Pennington. You guys are going to meet him this summer. He's going to be one of our speakers, former NFL player. He said he was at my church speaking, and he goes, man, when me and Randy first got together, I never really read the Bible. So I picked up a children's Bible so that I could understand it. You know, the one like the action adventure Bible, you got comic book Bible, you got children's Bible. We got videos today, Mellow. I don't like reading either. I, I, I'm halfway blind. I can't. I got ADHD. I can't remember what I just read. A whole page. Remember that? No way. It's not happening. So I use videos, children's Bibles. Google's gonna be your best friend, right? So many people ask me, "Oh, Pastor, how do I figure it out?" Just Google what the Bible has to say about it, and then if you if you are reading the Bible, then you'll get the context right because the Spirit will work. It's that, like we, we won't be able to understand everything. It's the Spirit that works in us to help us understand what that is. I have to also add, you might not be a Bible reader, but you need to surround your atmosphere with worship music and scripture. Um, you might not be reading, but that space is occupied with something. And you need to just realize that you are a product of your environment. So if you're saying, I don't, you know, you might talk about a Christian that's cheating on their, their spouse. Does that make them a good Christian? Your question is, does that make you a bad Christian? The, the, the question is, Christian is a title, which means Christ-like. So if you are less trying to be like Christ in the atmosphere, there are other things that make you a bad Christian and a good Christian. What are you doing, though, to become more Christ-like? And I would say to you, just just fill your atmosphere with worship music. Fill your atmosphere because what Satan is trying to do is he's trying to create an atmosphere for you that will destroy you. And God is trying to put you in an atmosphere like this of healing and growth uh, and instruction that will cause you to flourish like a, like a flower. So hopefully, and if there's a parent in here that's like, hey, I want to say something to that. I don't know if you're okay with that. If there's a parent in here that's like, hey, I want to add to that. This is not just for young people. And thank you, parents, for trying to stay out of it. But listen, this is, this is uh, sharing insights for everyone. So it's not just we are the only answers. So please. Great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Yeah. awesome for the video they're saying there's a bible app that shows you the video and the whole the whole shebang yes sir if you don't mind especially just take the mic so that we can capture the audio hopefully you guys don't mind okay is this better because of COVID instead of handing it around I'm not like sponsored by them or anything, but uh, Bible Project is a YouTube channel, has millions of subscribers, and like they create videos all the time. Randy knows what I'm talking about. Randy knows what I'm talking about. Videos all the time about like uh, certain teachings, certain stories in the Bible, parables, and books. Uh, I actually spend a lot of my time not really in the Bible, but instead focusing on stories and 
from this channel specifically. So going to it is called the Bible Project. It's a really good way to get your information from. And a really quick question for the far left. What's your uh, PR on bench press? I'm glad you asked, actually. I did it yesterday. Uh, 275. <clears throat> we'll be there soon. <laughs> So another thing just on the Bible, how much do you guys really read anyway, if we were to be realistic? Is, is reading the Bible the most relevant way to study? And, and I'm not taking away reading the Bible from this, but is that the most relevant way to study? Because if I'm studying for a message, I don't know about you, Katie, but the days, I, there was a time where I just read the Bible and that was it. But no, now I've got the internet, now I've got videos, now I can watch KD's message on it, and I could be like, hey, he had three bangers in there that I'm going to steal, and I'm going to come and share with my youth. So now when we're studying the Bible, it is meditating on it. It is thinking about it. If, if you have a certain situation, you can Google it. You can look up what different pastors say. We are living in 2021 where that information is at our fingertips. The same amount that we want to dig into evil, we can also dig into the word without opening up the old English and reading the old King James, if that's not for you. I think one more thing, too, is that there's so much context that exists within the Bible. And when we just read the Bible and we're like, especially in some of the Old Testament books where it's just all like facts and lists and like it gets so long and confusing. And so it's important for us to remember that there's a context behind that and there's history that's attached to the Bible. And so it, a lot of times when we look at that history and we go outside of the Bible to try and understand the history and the historical side of it, then we gain clarity for the actual Bible and what it's saying. So it's, it's almost, it's important for us to make sure that we're doing that and we're not just reading the Bible and saying, oh, well, this is what I think it says. Because what you think could be wrong or it could have nothing to do with the historical context. So it's really important to do that for yourself too and make sure that you're understanding what the text actually is saying. Um, or where it's coming from, the perspective um, also. So I can do all things through Christ doesn't mean that I can just do a backflip off the stage oh, right now? No. 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 But I'm at church. No, we love him. No, no. Jesus, all things, baby. No. <laughs> Context is so important. We learned that with the little Nas shoes, didn't we, guys? Context. Context. Read what happened before. Read what happened after. There's a whole storyline. Any other questions? Or does anybody want to add to that? Please. Um, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, but this is also a good point. Uh, you were talking about um, what happened over the past two weeks about Lil Nas's song and shoes um, and the scri uh, scripture he wrote. And he actually took that uh, out of contact himself. And people that do wear those shoes aren't doing, uh, well, they are doing sa uh, Satan's evil, but they do not know what they are walking in because that, uh, in Luke, says that he was uh, witnessing the loss of Satan falling from heaven to hell. That, that is studying the Bible. Yes, it's a pair of Nike sneakers that another company did, did with Lil Nas X, but would he not have known unless he went in and looked at that scripture? So the scripture they give is Luke 10, 18. But if you read Luke 10, 17 through 20, you're going to find out that Satan is a defeated foe and they're walking right on him. So hallelujah, bro. We love you. I need your money. Yes, sir. Please, if you don't mind taking this, this the, the platform. Uh, well, I mean, it's not like the other ones, but like, what are your song names on YouTube? Um, so my songs, I got a, I got a million. Just kidding, but um, I got Giant Slayer, I got War Cry, like, I got Running with My God. What's your name then? KD Three. KD Three. KD Three. And the new. Nah. 
K3 Media. Yeah, the, then that's old stuff. The new stuff that's coming. Listen, I just got to plug the camp. You don't want to miss the camp because we're going to drop, all of us are dropping new music uh, at the camp. So come through um, KD3 Media. You can follow me on Instagram, at KD3 Music. That's probably the easiest way to keep up with us. Anybody else with a question? Yes, ma'am. You got to walk all, you might as well just sit right here. <laughs> Put your hands together for this brave young soul, y'all. Um, so I actually have a few questions, if I can do it all at once. Okay, so the first question is, um, is it necessarily a sin to be like a part of the LG, LGBTQ plus community? Because I know that that's kind of parted ways. And then the second one is, um, I know one of the Ten Commandments is, um, I know they're mother and father, but what if they're like abusive to you and you have a like you love them because but then you can't really respect them for what they've done to you and other people so what's the <laughs> sorry <laughs> I definitely want I want to go backwards I just I want to I want to talk about the last one first because honoring your parents Really, especially when they've done something, like my dad used to beat my mom. And when I was five years old in Jamaica now, this is a Jamaican man. A Jamaican man, them wicked, you know? <laughs> but they're not that bad. But he used to beat my mom. And at five years old, I said to myself, when I get older, I'm going to kill him. Like, I literally wanted to kill him. Now, my mom had nine of us, and I don't know what power had to have been the power of God that brought all nine of us from Jamaica here. He ended up dying, but I had to learn forgiveness. And I had to say, you know what? I saw that. It made me a better man. It made me want to be a better husband. But honoring your parents is not for them. I need you to understand this, okay? Honoring your parents is for you and for the generation that's coming behind you. There are, there are things that are called generational curses, that will be broken when you are able to get into the presence of God and by the blood of Jesus, get forgiveness and ask him. And that's why I want to pray for you tonight. I feel a drawing to you. And I don't believe it's just you struggling. I think there are some demonic entities that are trying to invade your world through resentment and bitter. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I want to pray for you. And I'm saying is you, you are dead on. It's not a sin to feel the way you sin. But it becomes a sin when you start entertaining it and you start trying to live there. It is the grace of God and the blood of Jesus that's going to give you the ability to move away from resentment and bitterness and start to move into a realm of honoring your father. Why? That your days may be long. Remember, it's not about the parents. The honor is so that you can be here long. And honor, guys, besides just talking to her, goes beyond what your parents see. It's when you're not around your parents that honor is really going to be prevalent. Like, what do you do when, when nobody's seeing you? What do you do when you're at the mall? Do you roll your eyes at your teacher? Do you, that's also honoring the name of your parents. Now, what your parents did, God's going to deal with them on that. Vengeance is the Lord's. What you have to do is say, man, Lord, help me to forgive them. Help me to not become what Satan wants me to be because of the actions that they did to me. So I just wanted to, hopefully that helped. All right. Thank God you took that one. That was well put. <sighs> this is a hard one. Homosexuality, LGTQ+. Here's the thing. I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a youth pastor right now. Before this job, before my last church, I actually studied this uh, from the psychological side. I was a treatment counselor for traumatized and at-risk youth for the state of Colorado for five years. There's a lot of statistics that go into this, but I'm going to tell you first my belief. Before I tell you my belief, know this, that I would never look at somebody with a different sexual orientation any different than any different other sin in their life. Today in America, in 2021, it is put on a pedestal above you cheating on your wife or a Christian having sex before marriage, which we want to get into the statistics on those. They're really bad. And it's, it's, it's far worse than homosexuality, actually. 
uh, the, the, the Christian divorce rate, far worse than homosexuality. All of these sexual, uh, perverted sexual desires that we have and that we're born with are there. So what I want to make sure that I say is homosexuality, though it may be like grosser to you or something, I also believe that people believe that they're born that way. Now, if you're a straight person, Katie, you may have been born you know, attracted to a woman that looks just like your wife. Praise God, I was attracted to a woman that looked just like my wife. Hey, that's what I want. But imagine how it would be if I wasn't. Imagine how it would be. And then, and then I would feel that, okay, well, I didn't get a choice from this sin, right? I didn't, get a, I didn't get a choice to do this. I feel this way, but the Bible says this. Now, I will stand on that the Bible is true, 100% word of God. But I will also say that science is, it is, is still, we're still making, you know, we're still making discoveries. We're still, we're still digging up biblical text. We still don't have 100% understanding. So what I would tell you is this. Do I believe that if you are a homosexual that you go to heaven or that you don't go to heaven? I would not say that. I would say, if, well, if you don't go to heaven for your sin, then I don't go to heaven for my sin, and this person doesn't go to heaven for their sin. My God's grace is way bigger than my sin. Now, how I choose to live on a daily basis, whether I'm living in victory or not, is a huge, a huge either you know, victory or defeat in that. But I'll end with this. I believe that homosexuality is a sin. I don't really need God for that, though. I just need anatomy, biology, and I know doctors, and I know biologists and scientists who are homosexual. They would tell you the same thing I would tell you. I also believe that they are allowed to love whoever they want. They can love whoever they want, just like I can with my best friend. But if I begin to now go into, uh, you know, sexual situations with this person, now that becomes sin. So I wish as a society we would take the focus off of homosexuality and LGBTQ in America, and we would just focus on the sexual sin that all of us perverts are involved in. Amen? I'm not even going to ask about pornography or for you guys to raise your hand, women and men, both alike. This is the elephant in the room, my friend. Same thing, same sin different way of doing it. Does that help? Anybody else? Anybody else? Can I ask one more question? Could you cover my question? I know her. This is Kimberly. Yes. Kimberly. <laughs> okay. So this is the most recent thing that I believe is the hardest thing because he mentioned. My real dad is an alcoholic. And on my brother's birthday, March 7th, he said a lot of hurtful things about my mother. Like she cheated on him. She had an abortion and all that. And that He's, she's stealing money from him, and I know a bunch of guys that are from the the truth revealed. They know they know the truth, but it's hard to express because my brother doesn't even know who this man is because he walked out on our lives, and for me. It hurts because he was in my life more. And I said, and he posts this all on Facebook on my brother's birthday. My mom saw it. My mom, my stepdad saw it. I saw it. So I drew the line. I wrote back saying, hey, this is disrespect. And harassment. This cannot happen again. You will no longer talk to me or my mother in this type of way. And I very much love my father and I love my stepdad very much.
much. But what do I do when I'm pulled in two different directions, not knowing if this was right? Because he said so many lies, and I trusted him. Um, you know, the Bible says that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And the reason why he would spew lie is to crush. He's here to kill, steal, and to destroy. When I was growing up, and any one of these kids maybe can tell you the same, or young guys up here younger than me, um, a lie or something that was said only had power over me if I let it. If you know the truth, and your mom knows the truth, and those that love you know the truth, tell Satan to go back to hell. And I mean that with everything inside of me. Because all it is here for is to kill, to steal, and to destroy your joy. And God said, I have come so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And if you think, or any of you out here think you're living life, you haven't experienced it yet until you turn yourself over to Jesus. Because you have life, but God wants you to have it more abundantly. And when you're getting, probably something good was happening, and all of a sudden this comes out of the blue. That's usually how it happens. Because Satan can see that. He's like, man, I don't like the way Pastor Randy's smiling. I don't like that smile he got going on. And he send the dogs. And here comes a lie. And it only has power over him if you let it. But once you know the truth, the truth does what? Sets you Please, if it's on your heart and you hear something that God is sharing, give it to me. It may not be for you, and it may not be for somebody in this room, but somebody can need to hear a milestone that God is giving you. Everybody's going through something. Everybody. Every single person. And I want, I strive for this to be a place. So I hope that if you heard in my last, whatever you want to call the homosexual comments or whatever, that you are welcome here. I don't care what your sin is. I just care that, that you have a place where you can, you can begin to work that out. I'm 34 years old. I'm working sin out in my life still. I'm still working out who I am. I'm still leaning into who he calls me to be. So, so know this, that it's not what has happened to you. It's not even the decisions you make. It's not even who you say you are, not who your parents or your friends or your enemies. None of that is true. All of that is a lie. I fall for it every single day. But we are who God says we are. We are created in his image. Or do you take your iPhone to Honda to get it repaired? No, you take it back to the manufacturer. You are going to go to Apple. So we have to always connect back when we're hurt, when we're broken, when something happens, when tragedy strikes, when we've lost our identity and now my identity is how somebody's treating me or what's happened to me. We have to go back to the manufacturer so that they can reset who we are, what we're here to accomplish, what our mindset is. Amen. Uh, I just want to say one thing to you directly. You are a strong young woman to handle that the way you did. You didn't snap. You didn't like slit his throat or anything like that. You handled that. Like you did your thing. Like for real. Um, one thing that I kept hearing while you were talking is pressure. And pressure can either make you or break you. And one thing that pressure does is it can create diamonds. And all that pressure on you, the only way a diamond won't be formed is if it's removed from the pressure. So there's something great inside that's being formed right now. And the 
fact that you're withstanding it the way that you did, as strong as you did, shoot, you better be me. Like, I probably would have beat you. All right, so uh, you did your thing. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I have one thing more to say since there are thousands, if not millions of people not here to see this or watch this, but I want everybody here to know and tell this. Anybody who goes against what we say and who hates who we are and you know that they are a sinner, we love the sinner, we do not love the sin. And that applies to everyone. You want to sit up here? So I've been trying to grow my faith recently, but I feel like I'm kind of just stuck. Like I can't, like I'm almost there, but I'm not there yet and I'm just stuck. And I've been in the same place for a while. Do you have any suggestions to help me grow my faith? I think one thing, cause it's, everybody gets to a point where it just feels stagnant and you're like, where do I go from here? I think one thing is to make sure you're surrounding yourself with friends and family and you know you have this youth group here surround yourself with people who are also walking the same walk with you so they can keep keep you accountable um, like we keep each other accountable we uh, send verses every day we make sure hey you didn't answer the verse today you know so that we can constantly feed the word of God into each other um, so that's one suggestion that I have for you stay connected with other people that are feeling the same way as you and build together so I look at my man Suave over here. Can I get a flex real quick? I, I know. So, mine's fat though. So, I eat a lot of salt. You know, I get swollen. Uh, so, you don't get big in the gym doing the same workout routine all the time, right? You have to switch up your routine. So, let's say, I don't know, Juliana, but let's say you, before bed, you read your Bible and you pray. And that's what you've been doing every night. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to get you here. And now God's calling you here. But we can't get to where God's calling us by doing the same thing that we did to get to the next place. So maybe now double up on the time in the Bible or pick something new to do. So like one of my favorite things, like, like some of the most gospel conversations I get is with Justice, who's just a teenager, because I make it a point when I pick him up in the car, I say something wild that's going on in, in the world today and we discuss it over you know what the Bible says about it. So maybe it's grabbing that friend and just having a, a, a Bible conversation with somebody. I'm a pastor, and I know that's hard. <laughs> I'm not having Bible conversations all the time, especially with my friends. So it's, it's, it's switching up that routine, grabbing something different, trading it for something else. So I keep hearing different things about following the commandments. Some people say you have to follow the commandments to go to heaven, and other people be like, Jesus Christ died for our sins, so you don't have to follow the commandments. What do you have to say about that? So the commandments, remember Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. He came to perfect the law. The law is summed up in two words or two actions. Love God, love people. That's the law. <laughs> do not kill, do not murder, do not steal, do not commit. All of that is summed up in loving God and loving people. And look what happens when you do that. It's the cross. So Jesus didn't come to do away with the sin, with the, the, the Ten Commandments. He came to write the Ten Commandments on your heart with one word, love. There's no way you're going to cheat on your mom, your dad, your uncle. Your, there's no way you're going to molest your daughter. There's no way you're going to do all of that if you love God. So 
All these laws that are oh, Deuteronomy, don't eat cow, don't eat calf, don't eat, all of that is summed up. Do you love God? And if you love God, guess what you're going to do? You're going to read the word and find his commandments. And if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. So that's my answer to you. In the back? Oh, you were just saying amen? Oh, come on. Anybody else want to add to that? Come on. Let's let Nike, well, let's, Nike, can you remember? Okay. That's just, just us. Don't go nowhere. Don't, don't lose it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, at some point, I feel like um, when so many things pile up on top of each other, like bad things that are happening, is it like God doing something like telling you like, I don't, I don't like know how to say it. I love that. that question. Are you saying that through, there's a lot of bad things that all of a sudden start happening and you're saying, is God trying to get your attention through that? Yeah, I feel like saying like, I don't, I don't know how to like, yeah. 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 Punishing me. Man, I don't want to be doing all the answers. Come on, y'all. Like, I'm like ready. All right, let's use muscle head over here for an example, all right? <laughs> muscle head on the end, suave. Mr. I used to be him once. <laughs> whenever there's weight, Melo said it too, whenever there's weight and pressure, um, you cannot build a muscle without pulling or, or contracting that muscle. So, and my man right here, King David said it too, through his mom's tragedy, God got him closer. God brought him to a place where he can now speak to God and he's bold and not afraid to share the word. Yes, God is getting your attention. Um, I've seen people, now I'll say this and I'll shut up, I promise you, I, I can't stand it, I'm the only one talking. I've seen people pray, God, give me a boyfriend. God, I just need a boyfriend. I want to be like Susie and Robbie and Nikki and Bobby. I don't know. <laughs> they, get the, they get the boyfriend, right? Or they get the girlfriend and then they stop talking to God. They talking to God, God, I love you, I need a boyfriend. Boyfriend comes along, thank you, no more needing you. Guess what happens? The boyfriend cheats on her or punches her in her throat. Y'all laughing, but that's a real situation. Imagine a, a young girl coming to you, Pastor Randy, I need you to pray for me. I swallowed six teeth. <laughs> what happened? My boyfriend punched me in my throat. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you can put things before God and God will use circumstances to get your attention. And when he finally gets your attention, guess what? If it didn't kill you, what Satan meant for evil, God meant it for good. When Job, you know, Satan went to God and was like, yo, and, and God said to Satan, have you, Satan, considered my servant Job? God, Satan was like, man, I thought about him. But you got this hedge around him. God was the one that brought Job to Satan's attention. And what ended up happening was after God used Satan to strip Job, Job did not curse God. Job said, you know what? If God is doing this to me, there must be a reason. At the end, God, God just tripled, like dumped more blessings than he ever had on him. So whatever, it might be a friend that God is trying you to stop hanging out with. It might be a couple of friends. It might be a circle that God said, I don't want you around that no more. You know what's going on, and you know what God is saying to you. I'm going to pick up off of that. Only you know. So there was a stigma back in the day that if bad things were going on in your life, you were doing something wrong and God was punishing you. Well, now it's the opposite. Now it's like, oh man, you, just, you must be serving the Lord because Satan's attacking you, brother. No, you know what? If I decide to smoke cigarettes my whole life and I get cancer, guess how much God's involved in that? None. That was a decision that I made. Oh, I'm dealing with these health problems. You never work out. You eat horribly. you like, God's not involved in that. So you will know what it is that God is involved in and not. And the best way to know is what have you invited God in, into, right? You've had one too many bad relationships, whatever. Okay, well, when are you going to invite God into it? Oh, it's not as fun. I don't get my pleasure right now. Okay, well, it wasn't fun when I got fat for eating too many cheeseburgers either. But now I know I'm not going to do that because I'm going to ruin the good thing that God intended. That nice, juicy, double extra pepper jack with a slice of cheddar. <laughs> What time is it? Is it dinner time? <laughs> is it dinner time? Now, before you go, the question is not, is God trying to get your attention anymore? The question is, what are you going to do with what God's trying to do? He's got your attention. What are you going to do with it? All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Put your hands together. She's brave. 
Just us. Uh, to add on to her question about uh, the, the law and Jesus, it talks about in Romans 6, uh, Paul says that we are no longer under the law, but grace, uh, when he's talking to the churches, I believe. And, but then someone goes on to say, but because we are under grace and not law, shall we break that law? He goes on to say, may it never be. So, yeah. Good. Hey, that's great, man. That's good. What the law could not do, grace did. Yeah, I'm going to pick a couple, and, you know, we don't want to drag this out. We are super excited. Put your hands together for y'all, man. You got a good group. Hey, guys, I appreciate y'all sticking around. Those of you who have, I know some of you guys might have uh, rides here. If you want to text your parents, they're more than welcome to come in, finish up this pizza, or, you know, feel, feel free to leave. We, we are going to keep going just because we have to get more footage for the next episode, right? We got more questions. That works. But I understand parents may be outside. Feel free to also invite them in. Do what you must. While she's picking a couple of these hard questions, is there a parent that has a question or a parent that wants to share something or an adult that say, you know what, let me say this. Yes, ma'am, please. That's so awesome. Please, if you don't mind. Woo! Put your hands together. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a question for, um, on behalf of my daughter that's a little shy. Um, she wanted to know if she's having a conversation with a friend about Jesus and God, and they ask her something like, you know, why is he real? Or like, how do you know he's real? And she wants to try to convince them. How does she go about doing that? Young lady, are you on TikTok? Or is that, is she in the building? Yeah, she's right there. Are you on TikTok? All right. Just start, uh, just, just put in the search on TikTok, proof for God. There's so many great one minute videos on TikTok. After I got first, my first, through my first few weeks, scrolls, everything that was popping up there, it starts to get what I actually want. And once you start putting your searches in, it'll show you some different things. But search proof of God. There's a few people on there. Scroll some of those videos, and there's great scientific information. Uh, and that, that's what I like to use is my apologetics. Yes, sir. Just to add on to that, basically, um, Jesus' crucifixion happened in the Roman Empire, 0 0, with uh, Tiberius being the uh, emperor in that time. The Romans were so notorious and such a great government, uh, such a great like um, whole entire state, not because we know it, it's because they documented it perfectly over the course of many years. So the reason why you can always point to the text, to the scripture, to writings itself, is because the Roman Empire itself was so good and so like proper at writing down and taking notes of what they did, that they actually biblified and documented the crucifixion perfectly for us to understand in our later years. It wasn't a coincidence that Jesus was put in the Roman Empire at that time to die. It was made perfectly and perfectly timed so that we can have notes and evidence for later years in life and not just point at random, random things we see, but actually go back and look at the scripture that's happened over the course of many years. Woohoo! Wait, y'all look too from y'all look too light, man. Something isn't right. That's a setup. Now, just kidding. Come on. If if what he said was a little too fast, a great other reference is the Case for Christ. It's a great movie that really takes about an hour and a half, two hours to explain that. It's an atheist who challenged everything about the crucifixion. Was Jesus actually dead? Did he rise again, or was he alive the whole time? Asking these real questions that scientists prove, not pastors. And uh, another thing to keep in mind when you're having these conversations with these people is to win the person rather than the argument. And to understand that the heart at the end of the day is going to get harder or softer. That's good. That's real good. Um, I'll just say also, don't feel like you owe them anything. Don't feel like you have to. Uh-oh. Come on. Uh, look, she's, I ain't shy. Mama, I got this. Shoot, come on. Put your hands together for her. So I had a
had a question. We were so all in the back. We were just talking about the movie Case for Christ, and it said in the movie how when Jesus got sacrificed on the cross, that when they stabbed him in the side to see if he was dead, that blood and water came out. I don't understand what they mean by blood and water. Like, what was the scientific reason behind water coming out? Wow. Why do you want to shit? Well, know that I believe every iota of the Bible. So when it said blood and water literally came out, I believe blood and water literally came out. Water is a symbol of thirst. It quenches your thirst, and it's also a cleansing agent. And God is saying, so is my blood. Just as this, you know, there's a, there's a passage in Scripture where Jesus is saying, unless you drink this blood, you have no part in me. And the people are like, oh, my God, I'm not drinking that blood. I'm not a vampire. That's not what he's saying. He was saying, partake in this sacrifice unless you partake in this blood and put everything that's happened in your life onto this blood that I did for you, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have no part in me. So blood and water gushed out of his side as a representation that said, I am your savior. I'm your healer. I am the thirst quencher. I am the one that cleanses you. And that's my, my take on that. I don't know if that helps or not. But. So when I first heard that story, I was really young kind of didn't make sense, but as time went on, I'm glad you asked this, because I've never actually even said what my side of it, what my theory was. When, when Jesus was thirsty, on my recollection, they gave him wine and to parch him and to help him die quickly. So to me, Jesus is a filter, because to intake what is supposed to kill you and to give out water, which is supposed to heal you, that's what, that was my take on it, that Jesus was the filter from the world to input death and still give life from the earth. So, yeah, go ahead, clap it up. So, yeah. from, from what I remember from the movie, the, the actual scene, while that's how God works all the time. So here's the scientific thing. And then, like, has anybody ever heard of laminin? You ever heard of laminin? Louis Giglio does this great thing. Laminin is this thing. It's shaped as a crucifix, like a cross. So, like, sometimes God just got a sense of humor and he does that stuff. While what both of them said are true, I think what the movie is telling you is he goes to the physician. And his, his question is, was Jesus not dead? Did he just never die? So he just, you know, we hear military soldiers, this happens. They're in a hole in the middle of Afghanistan. And here they are on a podcast today telling us about it. Um, so what, I'm not a physician, but whatever scientifically that is called, that's what he was telling uh, Strobel is that we know he was dead because when you're dead, your blood mixes with your water in your lung right here or in your rib so that when it was that documentation is what proved it, like what Gabe said. Nothing is a coincidence when it comes to these things. You're never going to ask the question that trumps 2,000 years of Christianity, right? So like we stand up here or Christians anywhere should stand, not because of what they believe, but because what actually is. It doesn't take all faith. There's a lot of things in my life that take faith. But a lot of it is just, hey, history is made up out of common denominators. The Bible has done the best job at recording history. And if you were to put it next to the Quran or, you know, next to Buddhist text or whatever, they say on, on a sheet of paper, how many, if you stack it up, it's more than a mile higher than any other documented religion in the world. So we have, we have a text, like Gabe said, that is just, it's, it's as rock solid as it gets. Even if it's a lie, let's say it's a lie, it's still the most truthful lie out there. You can't get any closer as far as historic, common denominator documentation. So the question that was here, your phone locked, but uh -huh. I think I kind of And remember. you can't get in because <laughs> you um, don't have my face. But it was, um, it was, how do I know if I'm living a meaningful life? I feel, I always feel lost. Um, and like, I guess my first point would be that if there's still breath in your lungs, then you have meaning and purpose um, because if God didn't have meaning or purpose for your life, then he would probably just take you out of your life. 
Um, but I think also another important thing is to remember that the meaning of our life is, is really grounded in our identity, where we're finding our identity from. And so if you feel like you have no meaning or no purpose, then my question for you would be, well, where is your identity being found? Is your identity being found in the things of the world, what people say about you, um, how many likes you get on Instagram, right. what you're doing with your life, your occupation, or is your meaning being found in the fact that you're a child of God, that you're made in his image, that he died for you, that he loves you, that his grace is sufficient for you? Um, because when we find our meaning in those things, then the meanings that the world tells us matter don't matter anymore. And then it becomes clear that these things that we've been told our identity should be found in isn't isn't it at all. <laughs> like our, our identity isn't supposed to be found in who we like or where um, all of the things that are being said about us are coming from or what's been spoken over us. That's not where your identity comes from. Your identity comes from the fact that you are a child of God and that you're made in his image. And so I think if you're struggling with if you have meaning for your life, I think that that would be my question for you. Where are you finding your identity? Where is that rooted in? Um, because the Bible says that you're made in his image, um, and that's where your identity is found. Praise God. I think it's time to wrap it up. Um, I don't know if anybody, all hearts of mine are clear, if there's something else you want to say. I don't look at that face too much now. That's my baby girl right now. Um, so anyways, um, we're going to ask this one more question. But before we bring you up, I want you to also, you can come on up. Uh, I want you guys to also know that several people came out from different places. Um, to those of you that followed us over here, a couple just left. I just want to say thank y'all so much for coming all the way out from the bay um, you know, over there, and those of you that came out at my beckoning, and uh, also uh, Beach uh, uh, Riptide Trinity Wellsprings Church, the lead pastor. What's his name? Jason Carter. Put your hands together for Jason Carter as well, you guys. Pastor Jason Carter. I met him, right? That's a joke. Oh, man, thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get into this last question. Am I close? Okay. Yeah. Um, so kind of a weird thing to end off on, but um, why is um, suicide such, considered such a bad sin? I've had friends commit suicide. I've had friends commit suicide in front of me. I've had one die in my arms, and I want to believe that they made it to heaven, but at the same time, it's, one, it's considered one of the most unforgivable, unforgivable sins, and I just... I want it. I need confirmation. So, whatever you heard about how big of a sin or whatever, whatever that might be, the reason I would think that, that one might say it's a big sin is you love those people that you're talking about who have these ideolations or who may even have harmed themselves and you love them, right? And if somebody were to say that they were going to hurt them or were coming to hurt them, you'd want to protect them, right? So when we think this way about ourselves, we're doing that to God. We're talking trash about God's creation, about something that he purposed for his good. And we're saying and believing that we're not good enough. It is a mental illness. And Satan comes, like Pastor Dave said, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the only thing that's stopping you from following God's will for your life and, and, and having the most joy, the most happiness, the most purpose is only you. Satan does not have power over you. But if Satan can consume your mind, meaning if, if, if you had mentioned Bible reading earlier, He's going to do whatever he can to distract you from that Bible, to hear whatever your, your people at school are saying, to hear whatever your friends are saying, your, your haters, what, whatever these people are saying. He wants you to hear that. He doesn't want you to hear the truth in the word of God. So when we meditate, when we look on, and, and, and girlfriend, I do this three times a day, especially first thing in the morning. I'm not good enough for this job. I'm not even a good Christian. I'm probably an a-hole to people. All of these things that I think about myself are not true what God says. God doesn't say these things about me. I get them from somewhere. 
maybe encounters I have from other people, maybe failures that I have here in my job, maybe maybe because I just haven't been as obedient as God has asked me to, but it boils down to a mental illness. And that mental illness is is you believing wrongly about yourself. Becca went in on identity, I went in on a little bit, but, but that's what it is. It's you are believing a lie that you don't need to be here no more. You don't get control of of when you come in this world and when you go out. When you begin to take it into your own hands, now you begin to play God. And, and, and you and I would fight somebody for doing that to somebody we love. So why would God not step up and try to put it on your heart to say, hey, why would I love you? Why are you saying this about yourself and doing this? So the word of God is really the only thing, the power of of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing, no motivational speaker, no no daily daily prayer even, no just just Bible reading because you can read the Bible and not believe it, but with Jesus Christ, if you become to know him, you will know what it is that he says about you and believing it is not enough. You have to know it. And it's still going to attack you, but I know how to fight it. And that's all I can say about my personal experiences with that. Um, anybody else? I, I believe that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And I believe that life and death is the position and the power of God. Uh, he's the, you know, who knows? You might be choosing to end your life, but God may have purpose on your life. God may have something for you to, to do beyond this moment, beyond that moment. And um, to me, Uh, I don't believe that taking life, whether it's yours or somebody else, is ours for choosing. That's God. God has a timeline that it's time for you. Now, I've struggled with that. I've thought about people. If I was in the military and I was, I see my country at war and it was either fly my plane into the enemy and and kill them or, or let them kill us, what do I do? And maybe you, I've struggled with that. I'm like, man, if I'm a military guy, and, and here is a, a group of people about to destroy my family, but I can take them out with my plane. What do you do? And is that suicide? And will you go to hell? I've thought about all of that. Kamikaze, it was their job to take their plane down, and that's what they were taught to do. Are they going to hell for that? I don't know. But I do believe that life and death belongs to God. It is not my position to end his life, nor is it his to end mine. So, anybody want to add, say anything? Parents? Hallelujah. You guys smile it in the back. Jurassic Park. <laughs> Pastor Randy, you want to take us out of here? Thank you. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. One more time for Pastor Randy for allowing us to be here. And um, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to say thank you to our sound guys and and. And Becca, oh my gosh, they got us right. When the mic wasn't sounding right, they prayed and put the light of Jesus Christ on it, and it worked. Pastor Randy. I want to thank you all for tuning in to the unveiling part three, showcasing the love of God and equipping today's youth for tomorrow's challenges. Lord, be with each and every person at the sound of my voice. Lord, if we're leaving this place today during the live recording, or if you're watching it in 2023, via the internet. Lord, we know that you are mighty. We know that God, when your people come together in your name, that you are there. Lord, I didn't create these things. I didn't say these things. You said them and you said to let our requests be known unto you, Lord. So right now I pray for a mighty revival in Brevard County, that young people would step up, that a risen army would lead the charge in Brevard County. Young people, Lord, from every cultural background, from every race and nationality, Lord, with every gift and talent to come together and unite as the church, the Big C Church, Lord, that we would see you working in a mighty, mighty way in our community, in our families, in our homes, in our workplaces, Lord. And then that you would overflow from here in Bavar County out throughout the uttermost parts of the world. Jesus, you are good. Lord, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Lord, let each and every young person and old know that they are not alone in their battles and in their struggles, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys stay tuned for the unveiling.
part four. And that's all, folks. Hey, thank you guys so much. Leaders, thanks for sticking around, guys. I'll, I'll close everything down. If you guys got to get out of here, I understand.